Force diagrams on an incline, if you remember, work out a little bit differently because you've got a surface that is no longer horizontal. So your surface will be tilted and that orients where your x and y axis are. So because of that, force diagrams on an incline are going to have a little special case that we have to consider when solving them. And that has to do with the angle that you're going to use. So to illustrate what I mean, I'm going to draw a diagram and then draw the force diagram on that diagram to explain how the angles work out. So given an incline, and this is the ground, and there's a box at rest on the incline. We want to draw the force diagram for this box, and I'm going to do something different and draw the force diagram directly on the diagram itself. So my surface is here, which is my x-axis. Gravity is always going to point straight down. The normal force is perpendicular to the surface, and the frictional force will be parallel to the surface. Oops, forgot to label FG. Breaking apart whatever's not in line with the surface, so that's my FG, we get FGY and FGX. And just to get these balanced, I'm going to make normal force a little bit longer. Frictional force looks okay. Okay. We know that in order to find components, you use cosine for the x component and sine for the y component. However, when you're on an angle, you're going to have an angle of incline. So this is the angle of incline. Incline. Sorry, that did not look right. What you need whenever you find the x and y components is this angle right here, theta, which is relative to the x-axis. The angle of incline is not the angle that is relative to the x-axis. And the reason I drew this force diagram on the diagram itself is to show you this triangle. You've got a 90 degree angle here. You've got theta, which is the angle relative to the x that you need. And you're going to have the angle of incline which is the last angle of the triangle. So in order to find theta, you're going to have to do 90 degrees minus the angle of incline. And that's going to give you theta relative to the x-axis. And the reason we want theta, again, relative to the x-axis is so that you can say the x-component of the force is equal to the force times the cosine of the angle, and the y-component of the force is equal to the force times the sine of the angle. So as a general rule of thumb, I'm going to write this. Any time an object is on an incline, the angle of that incline is not the angle to use to find components. You're taking 90 degrees minus the angle of incline to get the theta to use for the cosine and the sine to get the x and the y components. Make sure anytime you see an incline, you are not using the angle they give you as your angle. I'm going to say it one more time. Do not use the angle of the incline when you're using sine and cosine to get the components. So if you're given a problem with an angle of 15 degree incline, when you're solving for the x and y components, you're going to use cosine of 75 degrees and sine of 75 degrees, not 15.